Welcome to New Mexico Restaurants Now, where we get you the inside scoop on the food scene across New Mexico. This episode is brought to you by NMRA's Chef's Table Sponsors. These businesses provide the most generous level of support to help keep our restaurants protected, informed, and successful. So thank you to Benny Key Foods, the Food Industry Self-Insurance Fund, Heartland Payment Systems, Shamrock Foods, Cisco New Mexico, and U.S. Foods. We would not be here without you. I'm Carol White of the New Mexico Restaurant Association, and our guest today is Rick Camulia with Paisano's Italian Restaurant in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Welcome, Rick. It's great to have you here. Thanks, Carol. Glad to be here. So, Rick, let's talk a little bit about the restaurant. Um, you're there in the dining room. It looks fabulous, as usual. Um, yeah. Talk to me about how do people get to your restaurant? Well, we're at 1935 Eubank, just north of Indian School, and we've only been here for going on 47, 48 years now. So most people know how to get to us, but uh, we're pretty easy. We're only about three, four blocks off of I-40 on Eubank North. So it's, uh, it's quick and easy from where you, wherever you are in town. Uh, we've been a fixture in the Northeast Heights of Albuquerque for that long. Wow. You know, I've, I've lived here for almost that many years. And um, that must have been when Eubank was just brand new, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Come on. No. So no, we've, we've, <laughs> you obviously. <laughs> okay. Okay. You obviously haven't been doing this for 47 years. So tell us the, um, the makeup of the restaurant from the time it was open. Well, actually, I have been doing this for 47 years. I may look young, right? But yeah. uh, I've been working here since I was 11 in this building. I've grown up here in my kitchen on and off, of course, as a kid from 11 you know, working with my dad, cooking. Uh, we were a different type of restaurant in those days. We did pizza, uh, sandwiches. Um, you know, that was our main thrust. Then we delivered pizzas all over Albuquerque in those days. Um, and yeah, I've been here for, for the duration. It's time. <laughs> it's time. But you did take it over from your parents. When was that? Yeah, I bought the restaurant and, and continued it. Um, that was about 28 years ago, 27 years ago, that I've been solo here um, with good background and training from my, from my family. Isn't that fun? You know, I, I ask a lot of folks, you know, how they got their start in the business, and I, I don't really need to ask you. I can tell, you know, you've been in it since you were, you know, a kid. Um, and I think that's wonderful. Yeah. You know, that's, that's how a lot of family a restaurants... Long used to have a little stool in the back, you know, like a step stool Yeah. that I would stand up on to roll pizzas with a rolling pin. That's how young I was. <laughs> yep. Uh, that would be illegal today, but you know, back in those days, it, it wasn't. <laughs> it was voluntary. It wasn't yeah. forced labor. That's yeah. good. That's good to know. But, but yeah, a um, lot of history here in this building added on to over the years, many times kitchen expansions, dining room expansions, uh, patio, uh, you know, the last uh, renovation we did was a little after, right around 2000, I think. And it's, it is what you see now. Um, and it's, it's nice. We have a really nice ambiance, you know, a, a tile uh, main dining room. That's a little bit different feel from the other rooms. It's kind of like a little house the way it has turned out, the way we added on to it over the years. We didn't have any dining at the beginning. We were all takeout and delivery. And then we added a couple of little dining rooms that had four tables in each one. And um, then we added another dining room onto that. So we had about five or six more tables. Then in the 80s, we, you're, you're looking at the dining room we finally added that uh, is the completed size of the restaurant. And then at 2000, we, we refurbished and I don't know, I'm going to turn this a little bit to see if you can see, but right out these windows is, uh, is a patio where we do patio seating. It's a really nice covered indoor 
feeling garden room uh, that we have 10 tables out there. Nice. So, so we have everything. Now, now was that addition helpful during COVID? I mean, were you able to use it because it is covered? We did use it. We Good. did use it. Um, we, we had doors open and, and things, but it's, uh, it's just has a, a, a canvas cover on it right now. It's completely enclosed with like Jeep like material and it's air conditioned. Actually, we have an air conditioner that pumps, uh, pumps air out there so that we can use it during the summer months. Nice. Nice. Well, brilliant. Mm -hmm. It is gorgeous. I mean, it, look at it. And I love the paintings on the wall and, and, uh, the color scheme that you've used. Yeah. It's beautiful. So uh, pretty cool, pretty cool stuff here. You know, these are some high tops over here. Yeah. Um, and then our chalkboards where we do all our specials, a lot of special items. We have swordfish and, and lamb spadini and crab cakes today, but some of the paintings on the wall are cool. You know, they're food oriented vegetables and, um, there's a booth seating there. Um, and as, as you see all the way at the back by the wine bar, uh, you see that that whole mural on the wall. Some of the other rooms have uh, scenes uh, that I took from cookbooks uh, that the artist uh, did a rendition, kind of looks like uh, uh, some hills in, in Italy coming right down to the ocean um, with the cottages and, and buildings really colorful. And uh, so it's it's a custom down home uh local neighborhood italian restaurant that by the way is the best italian restaurant in the state of new mexico and i guarantee you i'll put my food up against anywhere in this country the way we operate we're unique i tell you you know um i know that for a for a fact you know um I go there because you, and you advertise this too, you have gluten-free pasta and I'm gluten-free and I love pasta. And so that's why I go there and, you know, I, I get my fill, you know, I don't know, as often as I want to. <laughs> and so I really, I appreciate that about your food and it's all hand done. It's all, you know, beautiful, beautiful food. So Let's talk about that for a while. Let's talk about the food. I mean, you just mentioned your specials and it made my mouth water, right? Well, you have good taste and you can <laughs> probably imagine what we're doing. But yes, um, let's talk about the gluten-free thing here. Um, being an owner of an Italian restaurant, my father and I, uh, we were both diagnosed with celiac disease um, years and years and years ago. Um, so imagine being an Italian restaurant owner and eating meatball sandwiches and pizza and rigatoni with Italian sausage, you know, that was our lunch every day. And it's, it was a staple. So in those days, there was no gluten-free offerings. We were basically a pioneer in this genre before you, there was no gluten-free sections at the grocery store. This doctors knew nothing really about it. In fact, when my dad was diagnosed, they thought he had cancer and um, they tried everything to try to figure it out. And they said, well, let's try this one last thing. And they did an endoscopy and found out, oh, that's it. You have, you have celiac disease. And so doing that and being, not being able to have the normal things on an Italian menu, an Italian diet and being cooks, my father and mother were the test kitchen continual daily experimenting and creating of items that he could eat so he could continue to enjoy life, making a good bread, making a good pizza crust, coming up with a good substitute for pasta, uh, desserts. How, you know, you can't have desserts that are made from flour. Gluten is a problem. So perfected a gluten-free flour substitute that we mix here from the raw materials. Use, using that flour substitute in baking, in all of our desserts are gluten-free now. Cannolis, Italian wedding cake, tiramisu, lemon pudding cake, everything that is on our gluten-free 
dessert menu is gluten free. Not not that uh, it is a gluten free dessert menu, but that is our dessert menu. We do a pizza crust that's to die for. Most pizza crusts that you find that people have come up with are basically tortillas. They're horrible. Our pizza crust is a half an inch to a three quarters of an inch thick. And some of my employees actually prefer it over a wheat crust. It's that good. Um, our, we do a gluten-free bread that we make Italian sausage sandwiches and meatball sandwiches and, and um, using for sandwiches and garlic bread. Um, we, we have a coating that we use for fried calamari. All of our fried and breaded items, veal parmesan, chicken parmesan, are done with our gluten-free bread that we create from scratch, grind the bread, season the breadcrumbs, and use it for uh, a breading. Oh so my God, and your, and your calamari is to die for. And I know that exactly. because I can eat it, right? Yes. I can't eat calamari anywhere else. And, and well, I didn't- well, that's, what you that's what's unique about us is if you have to eat gluten-free, you can walk into my restaurant and order like you're normal. Yeah. I'll have fried calamari, I'll have uh, some garlic bread, um, I'll have uh, some pasta and a pizza and a beer. We have gluten-free beer. And then you have, you finish up with tiramisu or wedding cake for dessert. So you order here like you're totally, like, like you don't have celiac disease. Nothing, everything that we do here, you cannot find it anywhere. My, anywhere. my husband would really like that because he really, he, he's like, oh, you're going to tell him you're gluten-free again, you know? And, right. um, you know, it's life-changing. Mm, yeah. Well, and, and cannoli, I didn't, I didn't know your cannoli was gluten-free or I would have had it. I, I haven't had cannoli since I found out I really can't eat gluten. Yeah. Right. Our homemade, our homemade gelato that we serve in pizzelle bowls, we make gluten-free pizzelles wow. for the bowl. For the ice cream. So everything here is done that way. Um, but no, not only is celiac disease life-changing for those who have it, but it's like we are life changing, changing for those who have celiac disease because you walk in and everything's normal. You don't have to be afraid of that. My staff is fantastic. They know about we cater to so many food allergies now because of being able to cater to gluten free people that um, it's it's rote for them. They're, everybody's aware. We mark your table with a with a gluten free uh, placard when you order and you order gluten-free so no mistakes are made we do our best wonderful well let's let's get into the food because i know you have something to show us yeah. and i'm excited to see it and you know i know mm -hmm. you know you make everything from hand you know things that people don't make by hand anymore you all are making by hand there so let's talk about that and then i think you have a demo sure. for us yeah boy i mean this is something that we have done from the beginning. We haven't changed. We cook food here like it's my grandma's 1930s Sicilian kitchen. Okay. Nothing, there's nothing really that is brought in here pre-made that we heat up and serve to people. We create everything like a 1930s grandma Sicilian kitchen from the raw materials, from the raw flowers, from the raw meat. Um, produce. I mean, you, we are unlike 99.9% .9 of the restaurants in this nation, guaranteed. Um, as far as salad, we, we're getting fresh produce where other places are going to get salad that's already pre-cut and pre-mixed and simply take it out of a bag and serve it to you. We're, we're washing lettuce, cutting it by hand. We're taking carrots on a hand mandolin we're cutting all of our vegetables by hand. This is what we do for a fresh, crisp garden salad. We have the best salad and soups, by the way, that there is. Everything that we do is the best. I mean, I'm sorry, you know, it's not bragging if it's if it's true. Okay, <laughs> that's right. All of our salads are made that way. We make our salad dressings. We don't get a salad dressing and bring it in here and open a can and and give it to you on your salad. This is what most places do, and this. There's a lot of people who don't realize this. Our soups, we are roasting chicken bones, roasting vegetables and making our own stock. This is how we make soup here. So everything from the raw material made here, take for example, meatballs, something that simple. We don't buy ground beef.
from a supplier. We buy chuck, sides of chuck. We cut it, we grind it here ourselves. So we know what goes in the meat. For sausage, we, we're boning pork butts with a knife, cutting it up, grinding it, seasoning it, and stuffing our own sausage skins, okay? Um, nobody's doing this. I'm sorry. I, I would really <laughs> it's true. I know that for a fact. Nobody's doing these type of things. So what makes us unique is that we have people that like to cook, okay? Mm -hmm. And this is, it, you don't get satisfied as a cook or a kitchen employee by opening a bag that you bought from a national supplier uh, that are pre-made ravioli or pre-made lasagna or whatever, a pre-made sauce. We make those things here from the raw materials. Um, so we have people that love to cook and that, that are proud of the product because they know the quality of the product. They know that what we're putting out is the best you can put out. Um, we're a fresh pasta house. Nice. We are, we specialize in fresh pasta. I don't know how many people do that, but I would have to say it's an infinitesimal is the word. Um, we're cracking eggs by hand. We're not buying eggs that have been cracked in gallon jugs or anything. We're cracking eggs by hand, mixing it with some Dur Durham semolina flour and making pasta dough in a, and grinding spinach and adding to it for spinach pasta, tomato paste for tomato pasta. We do squid ink pasta. Um, we're a fresh pasta house. When you walk into Paisano's and you order something as simple as spaghetti and meatballs, your pasta is a dough ball. You order it, we sheet it on a pasta sheeter, cut it by hand on a pasta cutter, and drop it into boiling water and saute it after it's cooked, which takes a minute, with our sauces made in-house, <sighs> put on a plate and put out. So it, it's, it doesn't get any fresher. It doesn't that get any fresher. sounds so good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk you back to our kitchen and kind of demonstrate that for you. Okay, so remember that some people are, are listening to this and they're not going to be seeing the video. Um, and they can always see the video on our YouTube channel at New Mexico Restaurants Now. But uh, we're going we're gonna to take you through and, and give you a verbal explanation of what's going on as well. So we're going Absolutely. into the kitchen. And let's see what we got here. This is Kyle, who's hey, our Kyle. executive chef. Hi. <laughs> so we've got something kind of set up here that um, a quick demonstration of what happens when you walk into Paisano's and you order a pasta dish. Um, okay. What we do is we take, we take, we, your, your pasta is a dough ball. This happens to be spinach pasta. This is our semolina egg pasta and what we do is we sheet it on a pasta sheeter and run it through these hand cutters to your choice in fact if you want any cut of pasta go ahead and sheet uh, spinach pasta any cut of pasta that you want we're kind of like uh burger king in that way have it your way so if you want fettuccine with meatballs instead of spaghetti with meatballs, you can have it. If you want spinach fettuccine, if you want spinach angel hair, if you want tomato linguine, you could have it. Um, Look so at that. Okay, so so he just put the, the, pasta, um, the spinach pasta, pasta dough ball yep. into the sheeter, and now it is paper thin. You can see through it. Now it's gorgeous. Exactly. Paper thin, cut, and it's fresh. Then we, uh, we put it into... These hand Italian, by the way, pasta cutters. And you can see it coming out here. And it's going to be linguine. <laughs> so, okay, and it cuts it into a nice ribbony oh, linguine that's fresh. And gorgeous. we immediately take this, we drop it into boiling water, cook it for you. And then we uh, saute it. This one happens, we just put it for expeditious this we uh we we um, 
did some spinach linguine with what we call linguine Livorno, uh, grilled chicken, olive oil, garlic sauce uh, with olives, tomatoes, capers, artichoke heart um, over the spinach pasta. It's, it's excellent. Oh and my it's God, it looks fabulous. I hope you can see it. Oh, it's gorgeous. But, it's absolutely every color you could want. And, and with your spinach yeah. pasta, it's gorgeous. Yeah, it looks nice. Um, so this is what happens when you walk into Paisano's. Nice. Yeah. That is a wonderful demonstration. And for those of you who have, can't see that because you're listening to this, I encourage you to go to the video and just look at that part for, you know, it will make you hungry. You will be going to Paisano's very, very soon. That's a fact. And not only, not, we have about 15 different sauces that we do here. Um, start from the top, marinara, spaghetti with meatballs, homemade Italian sausage, obviously everything made in house. Uh, fettuccine alfredo, chicken breast alfredo. Do we do a shrimp dish with cream and fresh vegetables, primavera? We do pan seared sea scallops on angel hair with a roasted red pepper, roasted tomato, shellfish broth. Um, so we have a myriad of sauces. We do a sauce that is like a tomato cream sauce that we call Lucchese, has sausage, chicken, sun dried tomatoes, portobello mushrooms, and we finish it with a dollop of regatta cheese in the middle, um, right? Yeah. White clam sauce, red clam sauce, all the traditional favorites. Linguine pesto made in house, by the way, where we're taking fresh basil and pureeing it with walnut, salt, pepper, garlic, um, and Parmesan cheese made in house, mm. fresh. So um, you're not going to get any closer to Italy. <laughs> than right here. Brilliant. I, you know, and like I said, uh, you're making my mouth water, you know, I'm sure I'm going to be there in the next couple of days. Cause I, I want that spinach linguine. That looks fabulous. Oh my God. And we, we do, we do all of these gluten-free substituting our gluten-free rice noodle. Nice. So you can actually come in and have it that way. Mm -hmm. Very good. Basically every, every dish in our menu, almost except for some of our stuffed pasta items like ravioli. Um, we run ravioli specials, gluten-free sometimes. But everything can be substituted with a gluten-free noodle too. Nice. So the gluten-free people can bring their family and friends who don't have to eat gluten-free and everybody can eat together and almost have the same thing. Yes, and that is nice because, <laughs> because um, you know, they get tired of eating gluten-free and, and the family just because one person is gluten-free, right? So, right. yeah. Well, this has been fun. You know, Rick, I want to, I want to make sure we, we know how to get reservations at your restaurant and we know how to, um, we need to tell people how to get in touch with, with you all mm -hmm. and your preferred way to, to make reservations. So tell us. Um, well, that's another thing that might be unique about us is we don't accept reservations except for large parties where we work on a walk-in basis and it's never a problem. People can walk in with parties less than six, get a table. Um, you just call the restaurant 505-298-7541. If you need to talk to us for any reason, uh, if you need to make a reservation for a large group, we sure take them. We cater off site as well, all of the same food or food that, that you might want to do that's not even on our menu. The sky's the limit. Your, your thoughts are the limit. If you have a special Italian dish that you like or not even an Italian dish, we'll cater it for you. We'll create it. And um, yeah, come on down tonight. The sooner the better while it's uh, fresh in your mind. Nice. you think north of Indian school on Eubank. You can't miss it, really. It is, <laughs> it has been there for a long time. So, and Rick, I Absolutely. wanted to remind you um, just, just as we close out that um, you are one of the first restaurants that, or restaurateurs that I met when I came to Albuquerque and took this job. Yeah. And I don't know if you remember that, but uh, you called me up and said you had a problem 
with an inspector and you and I went on a local radio show and, yeah. uh, you know, uh, talked about yeah. that and, and we, we made we've, a difference. Yeah, that's right. You have been Absolutely. calling me ever since. Yeah. But we did make a difference and I appreciate, I appreciate you getting me involved that quickly. You know, I think I had just moved to town. It was, it was within my first week or two. And, uh, and you asked me, do you want to go on the radio? And, uh, you know, <laughs> I was like, okay, we'll do that. Yeah, well, it was a uh, baptism under fire, right? That was exactly what that was. <laughs> well, good. I'm so I'm I'm so happy we got to do this. Thank you so much, and thank your chef uh, for the demonstration. That's absolutely wonderful. Um, and absolutely, anytime. We'll talk to you soon. Okay, doke. And I want to thank uh, Rick, and I want to thank our generous sponsors, U.S. Foods, Cisco, New Mexico, Shamrock Foods, Heartland Payment, <clears throat> Heartland Payments and Systems, the Food Industry Self-Insurance Fund, and Benny Keith Foods for their annual sponsorship of NMRA and its programs. Visit nmrestaurants.org to learn more about our Chef Table sponsors. And thanks for tuning in to New Mexico Restaurants Now. You can watch this and other episodes on the new New Mexico Restaurants Now YouTube channel, and you can subscribe to the audio podcasts at Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Amazon Music.